Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm Carla with Race to Walk, and today I'm going to be doing a review on Oil on Water by Helan Habila. But before we get started, a little bit about this channel. Here we share good thoughts about good words, and on Fridays I host a live Bible study on Instagram at Race to Walk, and then I publish two videos a week. I publish a replay of that Bible study as well as a video about books. So if you're interested in any of those things, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and be sure to hit the bell for notifications so you can get updates about new videos. So April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and I have been doing a series of reviews of books related to that topic. The first week I did a review on a book coming out at the end of June written by my friend Charlotte Thomason about her experience as a sexual assault survivor called What Kind of Love Is This? I did a review on Reclaimed by Shannon McGraw which is basically a blueprint of reclaiming your life from trauma. And I did interviews with both Charlotte and Shannon. Then I did a review on Renting Lacey, which is a fictionalized account about human trafficking. And then last week I did a review on This Little Light by Krista Brown, which is about abuse in the church. And I do have a playlist of, of all these, I'll link to them in the description if you'd like to review them. It's not only the reviews, but the live stream discussions that we've been doing. And so, oil and water, like you might say, what does this have to do with any of it? And um, this is actually a book about, it's novel, it's, it's fiction, but it's about um, oil, oil conflict in the Niger Delta. So let me just talk about how I came across this book to begin with. I did a presentation at, tech, at the TechSmoot conference in January, and the theme of the conference was on embodiment. And my presentation was on the Hunchback of Notre Dame about how form interacts with spirit. I actually did a talk with, with Christy Lewis last year about the Hunchback of Notre Dame on the same topic and if I'll link to her video but basically what I did in my presentation was it's pretty close to what I what we talked about in the video with Christy. In each of the sessions they'd pair you with somebody at least one other person and so the person that was sharing my time slot was doing a presentation on this book. I was reading the description and I was thinking, how does this connect to what I'm talking about on the, it was just really weird. And then when she started her presentation, it was literally the most eerie thing I think I've ever even experienced because we had not talked at all before the presentation. I actually had problems with my email. It wasn't coming through until after my presentation. She and I literally did not even speak before we gave the presentation. And so my presentation was about how the things outside of us affect our spirit. And hers was about how this, this space was these, what was going on in the country was affecting the people. And if we had planned it out, we could not have come up with two presentations that tied together more closely. It was just really eerie. So when I've been reading these books about sexual abuse, the main thing that's really been highlighted to me through all this has been just how much that ab abuse affects and impacts the person throughout their whole life and what that does to them as a person. When I was choosing the books to read this month, I thought, okay, well, I'm doing it how it affects people personally. I'm doing it in the church. And I was thinking this would probably give an illustration of how it affects people in society. The things that stood out to me in the book are actually different than what the lady who was doing the presentation on it, what she focused on, but we're just going to talk a little bit about that. Just to start a little bit about the book, it's set in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. And so the story begins with an oil executive's wife being kidnapped. And this is something that actually happens pretty frequently. And they believe that she was kidnapped by militants and what they will do is they request a ransom and then they pay it and then there's almost kind of a protocol for this kidnapping. The oil executive wanted some journalists to go out and confirm that his wife was still alive before he paid the ransom. So this young reporter named Rufus volunteers to report on this story when he finds out that his journalist Akira Zak is also going to be going. So things don't quite go as planned. They have to dodge both the militants who they believe have taken the wife as well as the government soldiers who are almost as equally corrupt. So some of the themes in the book, it illustrates 
the impact of ruthless capitalism. It shows how it destroys society and it also shows how it impacts the people. So for me, what really stood out was the impact that actions have on people. Again, going back to the theme of this whole month, and I've mentioned this a couple times in the video, sometimes we don't understand why certain people do the things that they do or where they're coming from because we haven't walked in their shoes. This is really illustrating that same thing, but on a macro level. I mean, you read the story and it's a story, but realize it's based on reality that this is like situations that people actually live with. I mean, there are people who have to live with being in the crossfire of between the militants and the corporations and the government and at their mercy. I mean, this is what they live with every day. And I think this, this also illustrates the importance of reading books about people in other areas so we can understand like what their situation is like. I think that's one of the big problems with our U.S. society today is that we have absolutely no empathy or desire for understanding where another person is coming from. Your ideas about things are based on what you know and experience, but other people have experienced different things. And so we can't really understand not only them, but the impact of our own actions if we don't see how those actions are impacting people, right? Kind of the, the crux of this is that the oil companies are coming in, they're colluding with the government to force people off their land. And then these people are displaced and you see the impact on that displacement on the people. The older journalist that Rufus looks up to was really came to prominence for writing a story on the prostitutes in a particular area. And the person that th this journalist Zach featured was a woman named Anita. He said Anita had been thrown out of her parents' house when she became pregnant at 16. Her boyfriend couldn't marry her because he was too young and still in school. Zach said that in the traditional system, her boyfriend would have had no option but to marry her. But now her Christian parents threw her out because she had brought shame on them. He said that by writing about the girls, he would be showing what was happening to all of us, how we were gradually changing as a people, our values, our culture, our way of life, all changing irrevocably. Think about it. So I think sometimes we look at what problems are. So people saw prostitution as a problem, but they weren't looking at what brought about the prostitution to begin with. And some of these things were um, really, it had to do with, you know, the breakup of this displacement of people, not only from their community, but from their family. Now I have not read this, but it's just from some of the commentary I read about it. I think that's what After Virtue by Alistair McIntyre is about. I think he talks about that. I think I, that's a book I'm going to have to put on my list to read. So many books. So many books to read. I think that this book does two things. I think it should make us stop and think about what the impact of our own personal actions are on other people because some of these things are being done to benefit us, right? We're getting the benefit of some of these exploitive actions on the part of other people. So that kind of makes us a part of it too, doesn't it? So I think that's one thing. But I also think that this is in another country. This is things that we in the US aren't experiencing it. So it's kind of a step back. But I think if we look at, you know, there's these third degree problems that we're focusing on. Well, what's the first degree cause that's causing some of those things. And I think that that's what we need to look at when we're talking about things that need to change in our own society. Like if somebody has lung cancer, you, know, you can treat the cancer, but the problem is the smoking, quick smoking the cigarettes. What are the things that are causing the cancer in our society? I think that's the thing that we need to ask. I don't have the answer. I'm just saying, I think that we, those are the questions that we need to be asking. The other thing, that really stood out to me about this book was that just how everybody was blind to their own issues. Every single person, even some of the people who are really the villains, didn't see a problem with what they were doing. They all thought they were justified in their actions, whether it was theft, whether it was murder, whether it was whatever it was, they all thought they were right in doing it. And the only person that was really just the innocent in this was Rufus's sister. And she's really the only person that I think finds true peace at the end. But I think that's another thing that we need to realize too, is that 
we're, everybody's really good at justifying their own actions, no matter how horrific those actions are. And there were some pretty horrific actions in this book, but I think that's true of all of us. We all have blind spots and we all need the Holy Spirit to point out those things in our life that we're not well, able to see. Those are my thoughts on oil and water. I am going to have a discussion with a uh, lady that did the presentation at TextMove on May 8th. And I'm guessing we'll probably be talking about how these things impact the individual because that was what her pre presentation was on. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.